Beta Tables makes it easy to turn a plain HTML table into one with pagination, sorting, and searching, all done through JavaScript. In this episode, I'll show you how to set this up and supply the data from a Rails application. Well, let's get started. So here I have a page with a table of product records that is very plain and has no features. So let's add data table to this table. Now we could just download the source code and use that in our Rails app, but it's a little bit tricky to add to the asset pipeline because it includes images with relative paths that we would need to fix. Fortunately, there is a gem to help make this easier. I'm going to add this to the assets group in my gem file. It is called a jQuery dash data tables dash rails. Now this project has been changing rather quickly and I would like to get the latest changes. So I'm going to specify the GitHub option and pass in the path to the project in there. Now this GitHub option is new in Bundler 1.1. If you don't have that, then make sure to pass in the full Git path instead. So with this added, run the bundle command to install it. And now we can set this up with the asset pipeline by going to the application.js file and in the manifest here, add a call to require a data tables slash jQuery dot data tables. So this will load in the JavaScript and there's also some CSS we need to include. So I'll go to the application CSS file and add a call to require here and then that same path. So data tables slash jQuery dot data tables to include the styling. So now with data tables installed, let's add it to this products table. So here's what that source code looks like for that table. We're just looping through each of the product records to display them here. Now one thing we'd have to do to prepare this table is to wrap the head section of this table inside of a, a T head tag and the body section of this table inside of a, a T body tag like this. So this is something that data tables relies on. Now we also need a way to reference this table in JavaScript, so I'm going to add an ID to it called products. And now we can enable data tables on this using jQuery. So I'm going to do that inside of my products JavaScript file, and I'll just make sure the DOM is loaded by calling jQuery, and then I'll grab that products ID, and then call a data table on this, like that. And now reloading this page, we instantly have a data table complete with pagination, sorting and searching just like we did on the site. Now there are many different options that you can pass to this data table call. For example, there's one called S pagination type and you can set that to full numbers. Now watch this pagination section as I reload the browser and then it changes to numbers with next and previous buttons. Now I need to improve the styling for this but you get the idea. Now you can check out the usage section of the data table site for a full list of options for changing the data table behavior. Now, one thing you may be wondering is how to get the design look of the data table that's present on the homepage of the site. Well, this is done using jQuery UI. Now jQuery UI is included inside the jQuery Rails gem, but that doesn't include the CSS styling of jQuery UI that we need for our table. Fortunately, there is another gem called jQuery-UI-Rails that does include the CSS styling. And then run the bundle command to install this, and then I need to include it in my application CSS manifest. So there are two things in here that I need to include. One is called jQuery.UI.Core, and the other is jQuery.UI.Theme, and that'll include the smoothness theme by default. Now we also need to change the data table CSS file to one that is designed for jQuery UI. And there's one provided under the SRC directory called a demo table a JUI. And you might want to override this demo table file to uh, make the CSS look the way you want it. And then next, go into your coffee script and add this data table option called bJQuery UI and set that to true. And finally, go into your table and add this class called display to get everything to look right. And now reloading this page shows us our much nicer looking data table. Now, so far, everything has been happening through the browser on the client side. The actual HTML page includes all of the products and data table handles the pagination and searching and so on through JavaScript. So nothing is actually being communicated with the server here. Now this works fine for maybe a couple hundred records, but if you have thousands or even millions of records, you probably don't want to send all of that data over to the client. In that case, it's best to serve the data from our Rails application and have data table communicate with that as users interacting with it. 
Now, if you check out the server-side processing section in the docs, it will tell you what parameters are, will be sent to the server and what parameters it expects in response through JSON, and it shows you some examples here as well. So we need to set up our Rails application to respond in this manner. All right, I'm going to go through this pretty fast, so hold on to your seats. Now, one thing we'll need is some kind of way to do pagination on the server side. So inside of my gem file at the bottom here, I'm just going to add the will paginate gem. You'll, you'll need to run the bundle command to install that. And then going to my template, I no longer want to display the products directly inside of this table because these will now be fetched from the server. But this means I need some kind of URL for them to fetch the products by. So I'm going to pass in a data source attribute to the table where I can supply the URL. So I'll use the uh, products URL here that'll go to the index action and tell it to use the uh, JSON format for this. And then in my coffee script, I'm going to paste in a few more options into here. Uh, B processing shows a processing message when it's fetching the data and B server side setting that to true means it's going to fetch the data from the server side and the Ajax source here will supply the source URL to fetch the data from. So I'm fetching this from that source attribute I added to the products table in the HTML. So now data table will trigger this index action in the products controller expecting a JSON response. So I'm going to use a respond to block here and uh, handle the HTML format like normal, just rendering that template and add a JSON format, which will render out some JSON in response. Now here comes the tricky part. How do we respond with the proper JSON here? Now I've done a lot of experimenting on this and one option is to use JBuilder or Rabble like I've shown in previous episodes but those solutions got messy really quickly for me because there's quite a bit of logic that needs to go on here. Now, if the MVC structure of Rails ever feels too limiting and doesn't really fit with what you're trying to do, don't be afraid to create a new class if it cleans up your code. And that's what I want to do here. I'll call this class products data table and pass in the view context so it has access to helper methods because this is, this is sort of like a mini presenter for a JSON response. And I'm going to make this class under a new directory in the app directory called data tables and make a new file in here called products data table dot uh, rb. Now I don't have time to write this whole class from scratch here, so I'm just going to paste in some code for this. It's quite a bit, but it's pretty easy to understand. Let me walk you through it. So here's that view context that's passed in from the controller. I'm storing this in an instance variable and delegating a few helper methods to this so that we can conveniently call them from here. Now this as JSON method is triggered behind the scenes by the render JSON call in the controller. And this just returns all of the information that a data table expects, including all of the rows that should be in the table. Now this method just loops through each of the products and returns a two dimensional array containing the information for each of the uh, cells in the table. So there's the product name with a link, a category released on date and price. And the way the products are fetched is using this method. So we do them in the proper or sort order that is passed in through data table and the pagination and a search filter if that is present. Now this search is very simple. You'll probably want to expand on this maybe with a full text search engine such as Sphinx or Solar. And the rest of this class is just made up of methods to help with the sorting and pagination. Really not too complicated. Now you might need to restart your Rails app for it to pick up that new class, but once you do and hit reload here, everything works pretty much the same way. We still have the same pagination and sorting behavior and searching, but this time everything is supplied by the Rails application instead of having all the data loaded up front on the client side. Well, that's it for this episode on data tables. It does require some effort if you need server-side processing, but the end result is quite nice. Now, if you're interested in an alternative solution where I create something like this from scratch, check out episode 240. Well, thanks for watching. In the pro episode this week, I'm going to talk about the asset pipeline in production. As wonderful as it is, there can be some pain points. There I will show you why it works the way it does and how to customize it to fit your deployment setup. To watch that episode and all other pro and revised episodes, just head on over to railscast.com pro and then sign up there for just $9 per month.